Chemistry. That's right, welcome to PC Gaming Tech Summary. I'm your host, Gamer, and today is episode one of our series on chemistry in technology. Well, I might as well talk about it. I majored at it in university and got a degree in chemistry, so what the hey? Now, I bet you know what our first subject's gonna be. Well, yeah, yeah, so this is quite an important um, thing that is affecting a lot of people um, and some of the big players over time have um, left some things out that I'd like to add in. So, all-in-one CPU coolers, AIO. Yes, I bought an AIO for my new 12700K and I had to make an a decision very quickly. Did a quick search. All I saw was good reviews. Um, I didn't do a deep dive, which, you know, I was limited on time. So I got it. Used it for a month. Hey, no problems. No problems. But then I found out about lots and lots of problems. And I've got over 500 views of my videos now on this issue. So there's a lot of people out there with this problem. And the problem is that the MSI 240R and 360R AIOs are failing. And what's happening, in my opinion, I would have to do a testing on hundreds of these, but in my opinion, what may be the problem the rumored problem is blockage of the pump. It's not because of the pump. It's because, in my opinion, I believe it is rumored to be very, very poor water treatment. Now, some people might say, well, all we need to do is throw in lots of corrosion inhibitors and away we go. Really? Well, maybe that's why these are failing. What could it be? The system is closed. There's no air getting in. It's cycling around and around. Yes, that's right. You have biological fouling. Now, my 240R I used for a total of one month. No problems whatsoever. But I heard of this issue and I decided I needed to do something. I can't sit here, let it fail, and then what? Return it, get another one, then that fails, then the warranty's up, and where am I without a cooler? And paying a lot of money for some pretty RGB that didn't last very long, because, yeah. Okay, so I had to prevent this gunking up from happening, all right? Now, we are gonna do a test. Yes, we are right here live and in person. And now I have showed this a few few times. And uh, yes, this came out of the AIO. It is cloudy, which means it's full of suspended solids. This should be clear. This should not be cloudy, especially after one month, maybe five years, but not one month. Okay. So biological fouling. And what can happen is this. The biological fouling prevents the corrosion inhibitor from working because there's a biofilm on the metal. And then what happens underneath that biofilm? Well, you get cathodes and anodes. What are those? Let's start over here. Okay, this 
is a model of a molecule of water, okay, from Wikipedia, right? You've got a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and the red one is an oxygen. So hydrogen 2, H1, H2O, water, okay? That's water. So you can think of it being like this. And as water is flowing around at room temperature, you know, they're just moving around in all sorts of ways, okay? When they freeze, when water freezes, it goes into this formation, which I won't talk about much today because it's, it's, it's off the subject, okay? But there is, a, there is electronic interaction, okay? With the hydrogens, right? They have an electron that they actually don't want, and they give it to the oxygen, or they move it towards the oxygen, okay? So that means that the hydrogen has a localized positive charge. So like on a magnet, you got a positive end and a negative end, okay? Just like this. So the oxygen takes those electrons or, or pulls on those electrons towards it, and so it's got extra electrons in its environment. So we say it's negatively charged, okay? So that is the definition, okay? So if you've got an atom that give, wants to give up an electron, it has a positive charge. If it wants to take an electron, it has a negative charge, okay? So that's why there's all this electrical interaction here. Now, let's go over to the next slide. Now what we have here is called pH. And don't be thrown by this pH. It's simply a measurement of how acid, uh, uh, acidic a solution is or basically how non-acidic or you can say alkaline, you can say caustic, okay? So acid over here from, over here on this side of the scale, seven is neutral, okay? Seven is right in the middle. That means you got the same amount of hydroxide ions and the same amount of hydrogen ions, okay? H2O. So water can, can split apart and form a hydrogen and a hydroxide. So when you have distilled water, you have this situation where you have all of these water molecules, okay, but a very, very tiny few break apart or disassociate, not associate, but disassociate into a hydrogen and a hydroxide. OH is hydroxide, okay? Simply H2O, it just splits apart like that, okay? Now, if you have distilled water in your AIO, right? And you're gonna have a, a few ions here, but not a lot. But as soon as you get a bit of corrosion, those metallic bits and molecules and atoms Pretty soon you got charge in your solution. You got electrolyte. You got a way for ions to move around, which causes corrosion, okay? Now, if all you have is corrosion inhibitor in there, okay, well, what happens if you get biological fouling? You get filming, you get slime. Yeah. Behind the slime, you can get areas on the metal that have different charges. So electrons can flow and cause corrosion and get worse and worse and worse underneath the slime. So not all bacteria need oxygen, okay? There's aerobic uh, bacteria and anaerobic. So for memory, anaerobic, you don't need oxygen. Aerobic, you need it. I'll have to confirm that, but that's from my memory. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to prevent the bacterial growth in the first place. So you put in 
some agents, some um, formulations, chemicals, if you want to say it, that kill the bacteria. Because with the biofilms, the slime, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, you got a big mess, a big gunky mess of corrosion products, which will be copper, aluminum, aluminum, and various compounds. And what else is going to happen? Oh, well, that bacteria is going to create gases too. And then you're going to get gurgling in your pump if your pump is, is really high in your system. So don't put the blame on the pump. Well, if the pump's in the radiator, you need to adapt. And that's what I've done. I've put a one by four piece of wood under one end of my chassis, my PC case, okay? So it's tilted a bit, right? So the pump is in the radiator here, and here is the top of the radiator. This is where the air goes, up into here, all right? So there's no air in the pump. Now, you probably may have watched my previous videos where I showed where I drained the radiator and I refilled it with a, um, a, 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 a custom or, or a, a, a solution full of biocides and corrosion inhibitors. Okay. All right. So I had a little bubbles in there because when I had the radiator and I had a bottle, squirt bottle. Um, the solution I used is non-toxic, okay? But the solution in the uh, AIO to start with, if that's full of bacteria, I can't tell you how toxic that is. It could be, it could be fairly toxic, depending on what bacteria grow in, grow in there. And, you know, what if it's full of Legionella bacteria, which causes Legionnaire's disease? I don't know. I don't know what's in there. I'd, ha I'd have to have it all tested to find out, okay? Um, Legionnaire's disease comes from the Legionella bacteria, which can grow on cooling towers, <coughs> open system, where water trickles down and evaporation cools the water. They recycle the water a certain number of times. So it's a different cooling system, okay? and Legionnaire's disease can be caught from these cooling towers just by walking past it and breathing in if it's not treated properly, okay? So don't hang around cooling towers if you don't know it's being treated properly. All right. So when I uh, got this thing full, right, you can like ease up on squeezing it and um, basically, um, you, you'll be getting some airs coming through, but when the air stops, bubbles start coming through, that means it's full. So I, 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 I guess I was a, a bit of a panic or a hurry or something. I took it away and there was like a siphoning effect or something and it started coming out. Capped it off. I, d I just got the screw in there and, 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 and uh, close it. So there's a little bit of air. I, I allowed a little bit of air in the radiator, okay? So um, now it's been two weeks, okay? And um, there's no air. You can't hear any air in there. In fact, um, on my website, I've done a video where I put the microphone now right on the pump and I boot up the computer and there's no air bubbles now. Okay. So um, nothing to panic about if that happens to you. Um, I did have it on quite an angle for a while with a book underneath. Um, but when the computer's turned off, you can tilt it from side to side, back and forth a bit to try and, and um, so I'm, the last time I, I, I did a, a dip to side to side and, and then that worked. It, I got rid of the bubbles, all right? So we've got a brand new solution in there with corrosion inhibitors and biocides. It's supposed to last at least five years, okay? So, hey, I fixed the problem. And here we have an issue of pH. Is it acid or is it caustic? Okay, 
Now, so what we're going to do is so I got a little table here, and we're going to um, do a test to see what the pH is of those solutions. So I'm going to do a pH test here with a pH strip of the 28% uh, Mayhem's XT1 Nuke uh, coolant uh, that I made and put into, uh, refilled my AIO with it. Um, so you just dip it in here for about six seconds. Okay. So this is what it looked like to start with, the yellow. This is what it looks like now. Okay, so it's changed color. And we need to find a match on here. It's a bit, um, a bit hard to tell. Um, somewhere around um, eight, eight and a half. Um, it's not as blue. It's not that one. That one's top one's real dark on the on the chart. It's really dark there, and that's not what I'm seeing there. And that's different too. So it's not that one. If we go this way, then it's. Um, yeah, we're not getting, we're getting away from it. So probably somewhere in there is what I'm guessing. Okay, so um, I'll keep that in mind. So it's between eight and eight and a half, I would say. Okay, so the, the uh, concentrated solution of the Mayhem's um, coolant is between seven and eight. Um, so, 28% solution, we're just around the eight, just over the eight mark. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that result a bit later. Okay, so let's try the, the other solution now. So this is what it looks like before I put it in. It looks different, much different than the other one. Okay, so let's have a look. Thoroughly wash my hands after this. Okay, so if I move this way, I think it's around this this the six point five. So this is how very different the two solutions are in pH. One on the right is the old MSI coolant that's cloudy. Cloudy from an a coolant solution indicates bacterial fouling, fouling um, and uh, suspended solids should not look like that of only one month of, of use. Um, so we would need to do a, a bacterial test on there to confirm. But the cloudiness is an indication. It's an indication. It's not absolute, but it's an indication there's bacterial growth, bacterial fouling. All right, get rid of this stuff. Well, interesting results we got there. So the result between 8 and 8.5 for the Mayhem's Nuke solution. Oh, good. So having it at that range is good for bacteria inhibition, meaning helping to pre prevent the growth of bacteria. And it is lower than 8.5, which is good uh, for you know, just g generally uh, to minimize or reduce corrosion on aluminum, aluminum, and copper, 
both of those, okay? So, we're on the right track with that solution. I'm sure of it. I am sure of it. Um, so, um, there's stuff within the uh, formulation that is confidential. Um, it's got a, a patent on it or a patent on it. Um, and they've added some ingredients to make the ethylene glycol non-toxic. So, uh, great, okay. And now let's have a look at the 6.5 result for the MSI 240R coolant solution. One month in use, not good. Not good, not good. Uh, some of the worst bacteria grow at that pH. E. coli, salmonella, uh, even legionella can grow. Um, yeah, so some dangerous bacteria can grow at that temperature, at that pH. Now, it depends if you were to take your um, AIO and you like put on Cinebench for five minutes, 10 minutes and have it at like 90 degrees, then you could actually potentially kill a lot of the bacteria. But should you have to do that? Not really. I wouldn't think so. Uh, but if you're stuck or whatever, um, yeah, just, just have your Hard, hardware monitor, HW monitor open so you can, so you can um, keep an eye on the temps uh, that you're not get, getting thermal throttling and, and getting close to it and that kind of thing. All right, so 6.5, not good for copper? Not good for copper, 6.5, no, it is not good for copper. So you get a bit of copper corrosion and then pew, aluminum as well. If, you know, I do not know what this coolant solution is made of, but obviously bacterial control appears to be an issue. Okay, so you can have bacteria, if you have bacterial growth, it can actually acidify the solution. So it can start decreasing the pH of the solution as well. So that can make then the corrosion increasingly worse. So uh, pH is what's called on a logarithmic scale. So pH, I'll be right there, Captain Kirk. One moment, please. The communicator. We've got pH of seven, and if it gets reduced to pH of 6.5, that actually means there's five times more acid. So it's like an earthquake scale. So an earthquake scale is like if you have an earthquake of six, it's 10 times stronger than an earthquake of magnitude five. Okay, so that's the logarithmic scale. So to go from six to 6.5 would be five times greater. I just want you guys to know what's going on with those systems. And when your system fails, you have an idea of why. So just to reiterate, if your system fails, is gunked up, contact MSI, let them know. Have your serial number handy. Let them know that you want a replacement, even if it's out of warranty, okay? And tell them what you experienced, what you see, high temps, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So I will put the swap program link again in the in the description below which is if your serial number fits into a certain criteria then you can sw swap your cooler for another one if your idle temperatures are 60 degrees really now i ran across something 
okay, in the dictionary. I went to the dictionary to get a definition of galvanic corrosion. And I see in various places that the definition includes an electrolyte solution that you have to have. Well, I have seen this corrosion occurring in a dry environment with pipes of different metals and the electrons bouncing back and forth. We're going through a thunderstorm, which is very rare for my area. And so that's why I've switched things up a bit. Um, I'm just on battery power on the camera at the moment. All right. Okay. Now, according to the Collins Dictionary, galvanic corrosion is a type of corrosion caused by bringing together two different metals, one of which corrodes more rapidly than it would alone, while the other corrodes less rapidly. Full stop. Period. Okay. All right, that's that. We don't need to argue about it. I'm just reading from the dictionary. Who cares? Okay, what about microbial influenced corrosion? Well, you could have definitely corrosion from this even if you only had one type of metal. Yeah, that's right, one metal. As I was saying before about cathode, anode, that kind of thing, all right? Think of it as a battery. You've got a positive end and a negative end. If you've got slime, bacteria, coating on the metal, underneath that, you can get localized areas that are charged, right? So you can have a positive charge and a negative charge, and actually the corrosion is occurring with the same metallic device because electrons are going back and forth, positive and negative. So it is so important to have bacteria under control. Microbial byproducts, Okay, so the bugs waste products, you know, those waste products can be very aggressive against the metals and cause corrosion from just that as well. Okay, they can accelerate ongoing corrosion reactions as well. Okay, like a catalyst. Oh boy. Now, I just want to reiterate another thing. Okay, all of this corrosion and all of this bacterial growth, okay, can create gases, can bring gases out of solution. So in the liquid in your AIO, there's gonna be dissolved air in there anyways. If you release a lot of stuff into the liquid, that can cause these gases to have more of a pressure to, to come out, as well as these bacteria creating gases, ammonia, carbon dioxide, oxygen. And then you're getting bubbles from these gases and you hear them in the pump and you think, oh, oh, and you blame whatever, but it's actually from the fouling Okay, not having the water treated properly. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the, the pump right here. Okay, and um, I've got the case raised up here. Okay, about an inch up there. And so this is, uh, it's, it's about an inch higher up here. And so all this area here, which is about this area here, more like that a bit more than that actually um, is higher than the pump which is right here okay so that's what I've done now I'll just turn on the pump with the microphone right next to the pump
Well, if you'd like to see more videos on technology and even chemistry and technology, what the chemistry? Go ahead and subscribe and you'll get notified when those videos are ready. Thanks for joining us here on PC Gaming Tech Summary. And don't forget, you'll be seeing me in the next video.